Hey everyone, it's Riley. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make five DIY hamster toys. All of these are pretty simple to make, and I tried to come up with ideas that I haven't really seen people make before. So, let's jump into the video. This first toy is a hanging toy, and it's a little bit more involved, so I put it first to just get it out of the way. You're going to need some thicker paper, like cardstock or brown paper, toilet paper, a cube template, you can easily get a cube template off Google and just print it out, string, a pencil, scissors, or a knife to cut out your paper. You might also need a needle since you're going to be threading these cubes that you make onto the string. That will make sense later. You're also going to need some glue and your hamster's seed mix. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to trace out your cube template onto your paper. I made four cubes in total. You can make more or less depending on how long you want your hanging toy to be. Now all you're going to do is of course just cut those shapes out and then you can go on to the next step. Before we glue up the cube and make it into a 3D shape, we've got to pre-fold it. So basically just fold everything towards the center of the shape and follow the guidelines on the template. It will show you where to fold. It's pretty easy. The next step is assembling and gluing the cube, so basically you're just going to put glue on the tabs and fold it all together, but leave one of the sides open, sort of like a lid, so that you can put hamster food inside of the cube. Once the glue is mostly dry, you're just going to put your hamster food onto the toilet paper, wrap it up, and put it inside of each one of the boxes. Now you can just go ahead and glue the lid onto the cube and make sure all the glue is fully dried before you move on to the next step. So using your pencil, you're going to stab a small hole on the opposite side of each cube. Make sure you go easy on this because my cubes were starting to cave in. There's your incentive to make this toy because mine ended up a little bit lopsided and I'm sure you can do way better than me. Now you're going to grab a length of string. I think mine was around 30 inches long. It just depends on how long you want it to be. Keep knotting the end of that string until you get a really big knot and it's big enough so that it won't slip through the hole you punched in the cube. Here's where the needle comes in handy. You're going to be threading each one of the cubes onto the string, sort of like beads, and the needle just makes your job a lot easier. If you don't have the needle like me, just tape the end of your string and that should make your job easier as well. So just keep threading those cubes onto the string until you run out of cubes, and that's basically the hamster toy. This next toy is by far the easiest out of all five. All you're going to need is a toilet paper tube, scissors, and your hamster's seed mix. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to cut a 2.5 inch section off of your toilet paper tube to work with, and you're going to press in on the center of the edges to create this inverted arch shape. Then you're just going to flip that toilet paper tube over and fill it with a little bit of hamster food. And fold up the bottom the exact same way that you did the top. And then you're going to cut a very thin strip of a toilet paper tube and slip it over that cardboard structure that you just made, and you're done. I ended up making a ton of these just because they are so easy and quick to make. For the next DIY, you're going to need some cardboard, a knife and scissors to cut, a pencil, glue, and your hamster's seed mix. So first what you're going to do is make a rectangle onto your cardboard, however big or small you want, and then draw a slightly smaller rectangle on the inside of it. Cut this out and cut out that rectangle on the center of it so that the center is empty. I traced this three more times to make a total of four of these pieces. So now, tracing one of the shapes that you just made, you're going to make two more rectangles, except this time you're not going to cut out the centers. For the second rectangle you cut out, you're going to cut that down the middle and give each one of those smaller rectangles an arch shape, and then you are completely done cutting cardboard for the rest of this project. 
The next step is just assembling and gluing up the hamster toy. So you're making a sort of box, so just take that base piece that you made and put some glue around the edges, and then you're just going to keep layering on those rectangle pieces that have the hole cut out of the center. Once the glue has dried for a little bit, you can put the hamster food inside of the box and then just glue these two top little arch pieces onto the sides of the box to close it all up. The reason I cut arches into my pieces was just because my hamster needs a kind of head start to get to the food because he is lazy and doesn't like working super hard for his food. So that is the hamster toy. This next boredom breaker is another hanging toy and Crookshanks really liked it. You're gonna need five pieces that are all the same size of this really thick cardboard. I'm not exactly sure what it's called. You're also going to need these woven ball bird toys. The link for these is in the description below. I got them off Amazon. You'll also need scissors, string, and a pencil, but I forgot to show that. The first thing you're gonna do is just peel off the top layer only of all these pieces of this really thick cardboard and it kind of has a honeycomb pattern underneath which looks pretty cool. Using the pencil you're just gonna stab a hole right in the center of all these pieces of cardboard. Now you're going to get a length of string, and I think mine was around 30 inches long, but it really just depends on how long you want it to be, and you're going to tie this onto the bird toy. And now all that's left to do is just string on a piece of cardboard, and then another wicker ball, and just keep alternating until you run out of both. Just make sure when you add the cardboard pieces on that you're adding it with the exposed side facing up so that when you hang up this toy in the cage you can put some hamster food inside of the cardboard and it makes an amazing foraging toy. After you've done that, the hamster toy is done and personally this is my favorite out of the whole video because I just really like the way that it looks. For this last DIY, you're going to need this really thick cardboard again as well as scissors or a knife to cut it out a pencil, and you're also going to need a willow stick. So you're going to start off by tracing four circles onto this really thick piece of cardboard. I alternated in size, so I started off making big circles and then I slightly got smaller and smaller. Um, I had to cut these out off camera because they are just so awkward to cut out in general since the cardboard's so thick. Then you're just going to peel off the top layer of cardboard on all of the circles. The last step for this DIY is stabbing a hole right in the middle of each of these circles and skewering them onto the stick. So make sure that like the last DIY, the exposed side of the cardboard is facing up because you're gonna be propping this up in your cage sort of like a Christmas tree, I guess. That's what this toy reminds me of, sort of like a pine tree. And you get to sprinkle some treats inside of the cardboard and your hamster can forage for it. And this is the final hamster toy. So Crookshanks actually ended up playing with this a couple days after I left it in his cage. He took a pretty good chunk out of it as you can see here. Unfortunately, I don't have any footage of him actually chewing it up because he decided to destroy it while I was sleeping. <laughs> but I do have some footage of him destroying this toy right here. Um, he liked this toy the best and it was the only other hamster toy that I made that he played with. So I guess at least he liked some of them. Uh, it was really cute to watch him swing around on this, but eventually I felt kind of bad for him and I lowered the toy so that he wouldn't swing around on it too much or hurt himself, but he was so cute playing with it. So I think that's going to be about it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching and I hope that you enjoyed it. And of course, if you decide to make any of these DIYs, let me know down in the comments.